You know, you gotta give those professional YouTubers a lot of credit. Playing in this perspective is very difficult. <clears throat> now, watch this perfect flight all the way to the ground. Oh yeah, crushing it. We're going through that window. I have... Ah, balls. Okay, so I have no idea how to play like that. But that's not the point. I'm so excited about this build that I think I'm gonna build some more in this Building with Rohan building episode where I'm gonna build things. <clears throat> build, 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 build! Yeah! But first we gotta level some of this terrain because it's looking... Ah, it's, it's not even looking bad. It's just in the way. Get out of the way. And then we're gonna build this really cool feature right here so that our view from this pathway is enhanced even further. I really enjoy how this thing looks when it's disappearing in the fog like that in the background. But if we bump up our render distance, it also looks cool when it's not disappearing. What a winner. It looks cool both ways. <clears throat> so I underestimated how many resources it was gonna take to build this next section. So I designed and I designed and I designed and I thought, hey, I can start building this right away. Well, guess what? Nope, time to go digging. I need more blocks because uh, that's how it goes in survival, I guess. Time to start digging and I'll be back with all the resources I need to build this and then I'll tell you guys all about how I have all the resources and then maybe I'll start building. Or I could just go dig and then build. Or I could just start the time lapse and you guys wouldn't even have to see me digging and have to hear about it. Except that you did just hear about it. So, um, <clears throat> let's just start the time lapse. the view from over here remember guys when I was talking about putting that like the arches where that tree was and then building some kind of throne room here and then I did it and it looks awesome I'm so excited let's take a look from over here yep it looks pretty freaking good from here yep still looking awesome a little bit less awesome from here oh and freaking sweet from the inside too oh maybe it's looking good all right, enough complimenting myself. Let's talk about some of the finer details going on here. First off, there is supposed to be some foliage that goes in here, but I wanted to show you guys before I put the foliage. And second, I just got back from a real long work trip, and when I finally got some rest, my body was like, yep, you've been working too hard for too long, and I got sick. And what better time to record a video where I talk a whole bunch than when my voice sounds like I'm uh, choking on my own snot. <clears throat> That's a nice image for you guys. Anyway, let's talk about the build here. So, I didn't put the foliage in yet because I wanted you guys to get a feel for the difference that it makes in the detail and the life that it brings to what is otherwise kind of an intentionally lifeless and dead looking build, given that it's a, it's a destroyed castle, not one that's actively being lived in, and uh, oh, I didn't build the floor here yet. Okay, so let's not focus on that part. Out here, I have one more feature that I plan on building as well that goes right here. And I've got a little test audience, that is my uh, family and close friends and wife, that I asked to critique my builds before I present them to you guys. And I got mixed reviews on this one, so uh, yeah, it might, it might look good. It might look like a dumb pile of rocks, but given that it's castle ruins, and as some of you pointed out, maybe more like abbey ruins, but uh, you know, people type castle and search castle more often when it comes to YouTube videos. So I decided to call it a castle, but you can call it an abbey if you like. <clears throat> that rant aside, it might look like a pile of rocks. It might look like a really cool feature. I'm committing to it anyways, because if it does look good, I think it'll look awesome. Let me finish those last couple details. I'll put the floor in there, build this little thing, and then uh, plant some grass. I'll be right back in a second. There it is, guys. I added that little feature. It's supposed to be like this same corner tower right here, but it fell over and then it's being supported by like this pile of rocks and whatnot. 
Ah, I think it looks good for the most part. It's not perfect. I mean, it's kind of hard to put something like that. And you guys may have noticed, I sound even more sick. Yeah, I'm not getting better. I seem to be getting worse. But I need to make a video because it's been way too long. I added the grass in here, and I did something a little different than I often do, and that is I didn't put any leaves around. I actually wanted it to just be grass and ferns and minimal color so that it's brown, gray, and green. And I actually really like the feel that it creates in here. I finished putting the floor in up here, mostly dirt and whatnot. I want it to sort of look like the castle's been destroyed long enough that the floor is covered in dirt, but not so long that trees and larger plants have been growing in it yet. Let's talk about arches again. We talked about arches last episode and because we did a bunch of arches there. And then I've built a bunch more in a bunch of different styles. This one's more of a window than an arch, but even that top sort of has a curved feel. So if you just didn't have these uh, pole blocks here and here at the bottom, then it would sort of be an arch. Let's get a square view of this and sort of see the shape. You can see from straight on, it has a little bit of an odd profile. Not, not too different from these actually, a little bit steeper on the sides, but the, the frequency with which you actually look at anything straight on like that's pretty minimal. You have to line yourself up perfectly. And for the most part, I think these arches look excellent. I've done the similar thing where I did like a five block thick wall and that's sort of the degree of depth that we've put into this. And we went with the, the narrowest or the, the tightest, is that the right word? arch profile in the middle and then sort of flaring it out as we go to give it a lot of depth and a lot of interest and create cool textures and whatnot. We also used a lot of these walls on the inside because it's a great way to sort of create the illusion that we have vertical slabs and I really think that walls are seriously underused as walls. Yep, I said that walls are underused as walls. And then over here, it's almost like an aqueduct feel to it, but what I wanted to create was this set of support structure that would have held up the wall here. So if you imagine what it would have looked like when it was, well, not destroyed, that this would have been the, the central building, the edge of it, and then it, we would have had a lower wall supporting this outside section. Um, and a bunch of the arches are knocked down. Two of them extend this way, and I actually, believe it or not, I planned this brilliantly. It's lined up with like the wall here on both sides. I think it is anyway. I might be showing you guys this and it's horribly lined up. Oh no, it's like exactly the same on both sides. It's not lined up with like the center of the wall, but sort of the inside edge as if there would have been like a door here and then the floor in this section more raised to create some elevation change. These arches on this side are designed to look a little bit of a different style, less of like a rounded window and a little more parabolic. The way an engineered support arch would look in order to tolerate any real weight in the structure up above and then some smaller arches up above. I'm really overusing the word arches, aren't I? And then I guess the last thing I want to talk about is a little bit to do with color. Since it's a pretty monotone build, I've tried to use some lighter grays, like up here, these smooth stone slabs and a tiny little bit of diorite to try and frame a few of the items in here. And then a little bit, a little pinch of color, a little bit of the earthy tones with some acacia, granite, and I believe that's light gray terracotta well let's get eyes on this so I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to play on a computer where uh, it handles shaders really well but well, let's take a look at this without shaders and the first thing I notice as soon as I turn shaders off is a lot of the shadow depth is sort of lost I tried to incorporate some of that with just the color I think inside here I used a cyan terracotta on all of them try and make that shadow and that darkness inside um, one of the one of the features that I actually really like how it looks with shaders on the back of this wall is the way that this structure almost looks raised and then there's the support here. You can't see it very well with shaders off, but with shaders on it definitely stands out a lot more and you can kind of see that shape I was talking about and the way that this slopes down in these windows. I've always wanted my builds to look good without shaders and not need shaders. This is probably one of the ones that I think struggles the most without shaders because I've gone very monotone with a lot of the coloring that some of the depth is lost. I don't think entirely. I do think I've done a good enough job with the coloring that it still looks really good. But this build really comes into its own when you add the lighting effects that shaders offer. Now let's take a closer look at this fallen tower. <clears throat> shaders on again. Yeah, yep, yeah, it looks a lot better this way. One of the challenges was to not make it look like this thing was sort of holding itself up, but also not just blend it into another pile of rubble. 
And so I made the pile of rubble underneath a lot darker to try and distinguish this fallen tower a little bit better than otherwise. I think one of the problems right now is this pile of rubble seems too conveniently positioned that this tower just happened to land on this pile of rubble. One of the other issues with this that I don't like is that straight on, it like realistically this tower would have never fallen at a perfect 90 degree directly with that wall. Maybe odds are low. But obviously this is Minecraft and making it look like it's at a more of an angle yet would have been even harder because you can see that the shape of this got weird. It got real weird. Uh, and it was a bit of a challenge to try and make it make any sense. What I did actually was I took this tower and I used world edit to sort of flip it on its side and then reshape it and then I broke it again and wanted to make it look like it had one slope and then it was like kind of broken right here and then a little steeper up. We've got the same window on that fallen tower that we do on this one, but obviously it's at an angle, so it looks a little bit odd. Just watching the sunset over this, oh, it looks amazing, guys. I'm very proud of this build, I think. Really? Really, we were enjoying a sunset and the friggin' rains. You know what? You know what? That might even be better. That looks pretty cool. I think that this build is really starting to come into its own and I'm enjoying so much building something that's well, a lot different. I mean, I build castles, right? I'm, I'm pretty well well known as a guy who likes to build castles, but gosh, building, building a ruined castle is so different from building a regular castle. It's hard to, it's hard to capture entirely because you, you build it and then you demolish it and then you actually build it in survival. It's a, it's a weird build process. But anyways, guys, I think that'll about do it for this episode. I hope you guys really enjoy how this build is coming along and are just as excited as I am for future episodes. I am so thoroughly enjoying this. I'm so happy to be back at home, but boy, do I need to get some sleep and try and get better so that I don't sound quite so stuffy in the next one. Until next time, guys, see you later.